in recipes, and uh, as you get uh, as you go through the game and discover new materials, you'll get more recipes. Um, it's one thing that we are currently iterating on, and it's something that we would love people's feedback on. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Rhode Island. Hi, my name is Glenn Morris. I live here. Hi, Glenn. So I have never missed an Obsidian panel at a PAX East. Uh, my question is actually about Microsoft. Um, after the acquisition, I think a lot of people from the player side thought, ha, ah, sigh of relief, financial security. But here you're talking about arachnophobia research database. I'm wondering what were some of the things after the acquisition that people never thought to ask and then said, we have access to what? Yeah, uh, so Microsoft's been a great partner. So we actually started uh, working on this game before the acquisition. Um, but uh, once we got acquired, yeah, it opened up a lot of doors for us, uh, similar to the arachnophobia mode that you mentioned. Uh, I think having access to the accessibility lab as well um, and, and getting input on how to make the game more accessible is great. Um, we want to make sure that the game is, can be played by everyone. So hearing their input and their feedback um, and then also the user research lab, like getting a lot of play testing, which is really important for onboarding players. Um, having access to that uh, and being able to participate in that program has been great to, to iterate over the early game um, and making sure that first like 10 to 15 minutes is really strong. Thank you. Uh, quick question from chat. Um, let's see, where is it? Uh, I personally would love to see, because I, I think like rain, for example, would be a, a really, really cool thing to have. Um, just to, because I, I have no idea how it's going to work. Um, but uh, I think that's something that uh, is on the table for uh, post release um, once we're out in early access. And that's something that, you know, if you, if you have ideas for features that uh, you think would fit well with the game or you think would be cool, you know, bring it up and we, we definitely are listening. Thank you. Hi there, next question. What's your name? Where are you from? Hi there. Uh, my name is Mike. I'm from Orlando, Florida. Right on. Um, I kind of had like two ish design questions. The first one is like, it's a weird question, but where exactly would this take place? Is this going to be like in a child's backyard, like in like a random park, kind of like woodsy kind of thing? And like, how does that inform um, the type of like real world objects you'll see in the wild and could interact with? It, it does take place in a backyard. Uh, okay. And we, we definitely wanted to have a wide variety of things that were more than just plants. Because as cool as it is being small, like mm -hmm. eventually you know, you're going to get tired of just looking at the same green over and over again. And so we have studded the backyard with a number of unique features. Uh, I don't know that we are ready to talk about any specifics with that, That's but cool. there's definitely a lot to find out there. Uh, we wanted to make it an interesting place. Yeah, and one thing that we, you know, just in general at Obsidian, we like try to give reasons for everything that we put in the game. Yeah. Um, and that's one thing that, there's a reason for why all this stuff is in the yard, so. And you'll find that out when you play through the story. Cool, cool, thanks guys. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Next question, hi there. Hi, name's Henry, I'm uh, from the DC area. Welcome. Thank you. Um, so you mentioned that there were uh, helpful bugs. Is there any ability to like farm or corral them? Like, could I start an aphid farm so that I don't have to go hunting for food? That is something that we've been, it's been on our list of things that we've wanted to explore. Everyone on the team always goes, yeah, I want to do an aphid farm, uh, <laughs> potentially want to tame the bugs, pet the bugs, make them my friend. Ant rodeo. Yeah, we've been, <laughs> we've been even tossing around like, well, what if, can we use like, oh, they like to steal your meat. Can we, can we use the meat to make the ants your friends? Like, that currently we haven't done that yet, but these are all the kinds of things that are just extra ideas that have been stewing in our head. We've heard a lot of feedback when we first announced it XO about stuff like that too, so we know it's definitely something that the fans are looking for, so we're gonna be putting it in our roadmap. Cool, thank, thank you. you. From the Twitch chat, IG underscore asks, do, does the grass slash plant regrow? Yeah, so that's one awesome thing about this game is that things can regrow and it feels okay. Um, so grass will regrow over time and mushrooms will spawn back. Uh, and there's other things that will, you know, change over time as you play the game. All right, next question. Hi there. Hey, I'm Matt from uh, near the DC area as well. Hello. And uh, I was just wondering for, we got to see a lot of gameplay, but I was wondering for if you could speak uh, to what the sound's going to be like. What kind of, do you want to have music? 
you know, am I going to be walking around? Is it going to be a Minecraft feel? Dark Souls? Like, the rain thing is a really cool uh, thing that we were talking about with the weather. Um, how, do you, how do you plan on incorporating sound into your small world? Um, so, yes, yeah, uh, so Justin Bell, who's our audio director, and he's worked on pretty much, uh, you know, a lot of our titles, Pillars 1 and 2, and Outer Worlds. Um, he's currently composing music for our game, uh, so we do have a music soundtrack. It's, it's more ambient, in, in just because it's, since we are building an open world game, and, and you're going to be spending a lot of time in this environment, um, we do want to take inspiration from the time period as well, so there's a little bit of uh, late late 80s, early 90s flair to the music. Um, in terms of audio design, um, we are, uh, you know, we, we want to make, you know, you can't really understand what a creature is going to sound like, so we want to take some liberties in the creative decision making on audio design, um, and we want to make sure that they feel appropriate for what you think they should sound like, um, if that makes sense. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next question. Uh, hi guys, I'm from I'm Aiden from Boston. Uh, you guys keep talking about the story. Uh, does that mean there's an end game? Yeah, so we're actually not saying a whole lot about the story. There is a story, right? Um, and yeah, eventually the we game want it to be a surprise for players. All right, sweet, thank you. All right, from the uh, Twitch chat. Hello, Twitch again. Uh, what can we expect for the in-game community interaction? I don't know what they mean, so let's answer the best we can. <laughs> um, I guess for some, uh, you know, uh, you can communicate with each other through a chat wheel, um, similar to other games. So we do have a chat wheel. Um, we have emotes that you can, you know, give a thumbs up to your friend. Uh, so there's, there are ways of communicating without having to type in or, or do uh, voice over IP. All right, question, next question, hi there. Hi there, I'm Logan from The Cape. Um, my question is about crossplay. Is there any initiative to have there be crossplay between the different platforms? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we are, uh, our intention to have, is to have crossplay day one on, on uh, the game, so. Thank you. <laughs> Next question. Hi, my name's Solomon. I'm from Framingham, Massachusetts. And I was wondering, uh, where, how did you go about optimizing the game when there are so many insect interactions going on in the background? I'll take this one. Um, <laughs> this was a, a pretty, a, a lot of the stuff that is heavy for the character. So a lot of the animations, the models, they're running a lot of their similar AI. Um, Brian McIntosh uh, kind of helped design a lot of that too, where it's, there's a pretty neat debug mode that you can't see in here, but you can fly way above the, the yard and turn on debug, and you can just see like these little polygons of everything just moving around and picking up stuff and saying, I want to go to sleep, or I'm going to go steal this piece of food. It's, it's quite impressive and pretty neat to look at. Cool, thank you. New meaning to debug mode, right? Yes. <laughs> Interesting. Next question. Uh, what kind of interaction will there be with other parts of the ecosystem of the backyard? Like birdsy insects, would there be an expectation of seeing them possibly? Yeah, right now it's, it's mainly like insect on insect ecosystem. Um, so if you, you know, spiders will, will hunt and if you start, uh, you know, killing all their, what they usually hunt, like then they'll have to go somewhere else. So that, that's kind of what we're looking at for launch. Uh, we want to be able to expand on that um, as much as possible. We, we got all like the, the framework done um, and we're looking at ways of expanding that for the future. Thank you. We had a question from the Twitch chat about weapon durability. Is that something you guys are working on? Yeah, so we do have weapon durability. I, I mean, it's a, uh, the durability is pretty, I guess, uh, you know, you, you, do, you won't really notice it. Um, it's not like a super fast durability or in terms of, you know, the strength of the weapon will, will eventually degrade over time and then break, and then you have to repair it. And same thing with armor. Got and th this also is why you'd want to like craft some of like the tier two items like the- New Jersey, uh, so about that arachnophobia mode where you can kind of tone it down to help people who are scared of spiders, is that more, 
server side where everyone who's playing together now has to see it that way? Or if I'm playing with someone who wants to have that turned on, but I want to see the game at its basic uh, with everything turned off, can I do that as well? Yeah, it's client side, so you can do it on a, a per person basis. Uh, and it, it, it is surface mode or surface level, so it doesn't affect the way the spider plays. We still want the spider to be a challenging monster in the game, even if you are playing on arachnophobia mode. And we, we really want to evoke like the sense of danger that comes with fighting a giant monster just without triggering somebody's phobia. We had a question from the chat. I don't even think this is possible. They said, what will happen to the ecosystem if they wipe out all the spiders? Yeah, who knows? Uh, <laughs> everything will go, you know, all the insects will just go crazy. There's no spiders in the world. <laughs> I have no idea. The neighbors have spiders, too. They'll come. Ah, always, it's always <laughs> the neighbors. We have a question here. Hi there. What's your name? Hey, my name is David, and my question is, you said there's going to be a story. You said there's exploration and progress. Would be anything be story locked? Would you basically be able to do anything or go anywhere with enough exploration and preparation? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so the way that we're looking at the world design is we're, we're taking some inspiration from like Metroidvania games. Uh, so you'll have to be able to craft certain uh, you know things in the world to be able to progress into different areas. Uh, one of the examples uh, I think Sean is going to talk about. Because uh, I'm pretty sure I, I know what he's going to say. Uh, I maybe. Uh, so one of the things that we come across sometimes is if there's an area that's up high and requires some, you know, difficult to traverse method to get to. People have raised the concern. Well, what if somebody just builds stairs up there? And personally, I think that's great. Uh, we want to allow the player to overcome these challenges, however they they feel it best, and I think that giving, giving the players the tools to uh, you know, solve whatever problem they need to solve, I think is a more interesting way to do it than artificially gating things. Yeah, we call it like soft gates, <laughs> um, but uh, one of the examples is you know, like the, the gas mask that we showed off, you have to equip that to get through the, the haze area, so it's, there, there's a bit of that, um, but we want the player to be able to kind of solve these problems in different ways as well. Thank you. Thank you. So which really one of the questions in the chat was will be the different kinds of areas like biomes. And you kind of alluded to something like that, right? Yeah, we have a lot of different areas in the yard. So we want to, you know, having just an area of grass is only interesting for so long. So we have a, a, a bunch of different, like even in the grasslands, we have a flooded area where there's a sprinkler that's cracked and uh, has right. flooded a big portion of that, uh, of the yard. and. You know, different creatures will uh, call that home. Okay. Uh, Hi there. Hi, Mark from Ottawa. Hi, Mark. Um, tunneling. There seems to be a lot of tunnels. Any tunneling that can be made up by the players, or like digging, or like terraforming. Yeah, terraforming. Yeah. Uh, currently, we don't have any terraforming. Um, we do have a shovel tool, but it it at that scale. You'd have to move a lot of earth, uh, so so we don't have any terraforming yet. But uh, you know, like Adam and Robbie said, this is still early in the process, and we will take any ideas from the community. And Thank you. How high can you build? Yeah, um, right now we do have some limitations on how high you can build, um, and it's dictated by like how strong of materials that you're using to build. Um, so depending on the materials that you use for your walls, you can build higher structures. Mm -hmm. Couple Hi. more questions, then we're gonna wrap it up. Hi, what's your name? My name's Steven, I'm from Rhode Island. Um, I imagine the world, knowing you guys, is pretty good size. Is there gonna be other ways to traverse the world other than walking? Like maybe like we can craft stuff that can make us move faster? Yeah, we do have a couple ways of moving faster throughout the world. Um, there, there are items that you can craft um, to do that and eventually, uh, you know, it's not right now, but uh, something that I would love to have in the game is is riding uh, insects. Um, I know that makes the team sad because they have to do it, but I'm like, I want that. So, um, something that we might have in the future for quick traversal. Thank you. All right, two more questions. We're going to wrap it up. Go ahead.